<laughs> I was running late. I felt uh, so bad about that. I, I, I'm yeah. a premature ejaculator for the last 10,000 years. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I'm so glad you put that out there. <laughs> I always like to... I like... I gla- For me, glamorizing false is very important. It's, because you come to terms with it also. You yeah, you own it. What's the point? Sure. It's, it's, it's the greatest source of comedy. Uh, you might find this entertaining. Um, there was a producer who came and met me. Names? And, uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, nobody uh, watches uh, this podcast. Uh, uh, well, nonetheless, nonetheless, a producer came to me and they said, you know, Jeff... Rhyming, you have to rhyming the name? No. Nothing? Uh, Astrology sign? Mother's name? It's somewhere in the 12 months of the calendar. Damn you. <laughs> but he uh, he came to me and he said to me, and he said, Jeff, you have to understand something about Indian cinema. And I said, what is that? He said, most countries have two types of films. India has three. And I said, okay, fire away. And they said, good films and bad films in every country in the world. Mm-hmm. India has good films and bad films and Salman Khan films. Uh, Ooh, and that nice. was, and and you know, nice. I didn't at the time. I wasn't sure what he meant, yeah. but after all these years, I get it. Which is Salman Khan is his own genre yeah. unto himself. Hey, Clint and, Uncle says something like that when but, you're ready or whatever. Yeah, you know, well, you know, Clint can say whatever he yeah. wants at this point. I mean, yeah. you know, he's uh, he's he's had a career that you know will never happen again. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, the I guy, he used what eight words per film. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> I've seen them all. I'm yeah. a big fan. No, he's he's amazing. Yeah. He's a great yeah. filmmaker and a great actor and just a. Unbelievable human 90? being. Still working. I think he's 92. Uh, just did a film. To, yeah, well, you know. he's on his feet, he's yeah, he's amazing. I mean, I mean you know, they're they're going to be filming his in his funeral probably. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, it's terrible. Jewish as humor. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Draw the line. Yeah. <laughs> this is <a> dark humor. <laughs> he worse than me now. Yeah, well, What's hey, going yeah. on? We have watched, especially in the last five years, with the explosion of the OTT platforms, mm-hmm. we've watched acting become the one staple that you can count on. You know, where before it used to be formulaic storytelling or different types of shots or different types of locations. No, no, no. Today, the thing that's really holding the gravity of things from this new show Korra, from Guns and Gulabs, to Patalok, you know, everything you heard about during the pandemic and beyond, the first thing that people say is the acting was great, the performances are great. And that's really something that I think is and, impressive. I, I totally agree with you because I've been watching OTT with the volume off. Mm-hmm. And yet I'm able to pick up what's going on. And that's only because of some superb acting. Yeah, no, the acting has really jumped yeah. off the screen. I like the way he ignores me. No, <laughs> no, yeah, I'm agreeing. I'm, I'm totally agreeing with you. All right, uh, Cyrus says, and we've got our guest back after six years. Mm-hmm. He was a long-haired hippie then, but India has broken him down. Mm -hmm. And Jeff Goldberg, Mm -hmm. what's left of him, has joined us after six years. That's right. My hair was long back then. That's true. Good call. Well done. And we were fighting over, not fighting over, we were discussing Trump. Yeah. A a lot of uh, right-wing tendencies across the world, politic, so Mm -hmm. to speak, and all that. Yeah. Of course, uh, we have to discuss your life and career because mm-hmm. you still stay in India. God mm-hmm. knows why. The taxation policies here are better, mm-hmm. I hear, than America for uh-huh. rich people. Uh-huh. Uh, Really? Okay, good to and, know. And Jeff, let me tell you, in six years, my career has gone nowhere. But the uh-huh. studio is better. Yeah. We've got a much bigger setup. Yeah, no, I mean, the studio looks great. His last time I was here, it was a bit of a bunker, which I quite enjoyed as well, to be fair. Well, you know, you get what you get. But what happened is Sparsh, our producer, burned down the studio. Oh. Uh, this is why I was doing a reality show called Big Boss, for uh-huh. which uh, I was paid very little money just uh-huh. to humiliate my family name. Uh-huh. And uh, in the meantime, this really happened. So they burned, somebody burned it down. We don't uh-huh. know what exactly happened. Uh-huh. And we lost the studio. Amazing. So this is a uh, this is the studio uh, mm-hmm. in progress, mm-hmm. so to speak. So we already know if this is going to be the studio or not. Well, and, and I'm I'm Jewish, as I'm sure you've discerned. Yeah, uh, we call that kosher fire. Uh, you know, mm. which is a way to which is a way to get yourself so a newer. Well, kosher generally means like pure, right? Yeah. So, so then, um, so what you mean is this is a good fire? It, well, something like that. Yeah, yeah. A mitzvah, a good thing came out. The Russians also believe the fire is pure, and you know, exactly. It's to be worshipped. So you guys brought your flame with you across. The flame. Yeah. So they say. Yeah. You know, <laughs> millions of miles, and the yeah. same flame was burning eternally bright, and yeah. twenty people were standing there making sure that yeah. no wind yeah. <laughs> across well, the seven seas. We all, we all have we all have these yeah. mythologies. Which I, are, I love that story. Yeah. I'd love to be the guy who actually. If the flame went off, yeah. what would be his point after yeah. that? Yeah, you should write a story about it. It'd oh, be a nice scary. story. Yeah, but no, the world is uh, the world has changed in our six years uh, apart, but stayed very much the same in mm-hmm. many ways. So, well, I, this one thing I discussed with you because the rise of uh, I won't say intifa, but the, the left, mm-hmm. the left has become far more aggressive than it was six years back. Well, you know, historically, a lot of people forget that like terrorism in the modern context is actually a left. True, uh, is true. actually a left thing. Right. Um, you know, if you go back to the, the PLO first real, and all that, yeah, right? If you go back to like 
yeah. late 19th century, a lot of that stuff started on the left and moved all the way through the 20th century. Vera, right. Like, as socialist as you can get, aren't they? Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, in, in, in uh, Tsarist Russia, in, in Napoleonic France, you know, you see left-leaning terrorist organizations. So I don't think aggressive— you bloody lefties! Oh, no, I'm just, <laughs> just taking no, a chance. No, 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 I think, I think, I think, I think— you know, and again, it's all about these people don't define themselves as terrorists. They define themselves as freedom fighters. So I think it's just a question of uh, adjectives and adverbs, which is a very hot topic today in the world of wokeism. Wow. Why did you bring that? Why, did, why open that box, really? Oof. So we'll have to go there in a second. But let's, let's rewind and go back to your life now because we haven't spoken to you for six years. Sure. So what's happening? We use your studio, by the way. Oh, have Paid you? Paid the full price. Oh, okay. Jewish, I, am, I, am I right? <laughs> hey, well, you <laughs> know. You go. Uh, Kosher, my foot. <laughs> yeah, it was great, though. Thank and you. We had a good, we had a good time and... Uh, Hopefully, we'll use it again soon. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I had no idea we had that space in Bandra. For, I mean, it's just amazing. Thank Thanks you. a foreigner to come here and find a space and uh, make it look like well, something you know. you're in Greenwich Village in a nice little you know, <laughs> off-Broadway uh, kind of place. And there were two, three of them. Yeah, there's two. We have two theaters. We have two theaters now. Um, no, in the last six years, I've been right down the road from you, uh, as I always have been in Bandra. Uh, yes, we have expanded in the last year. We uh, actually took uh, another floor in our building. And at the moment... Uh, we run two theaters. Uh, we have comedy each weekend. But, you know, the mainstay of what we do is train actors. And I think the reason we've been able to maintain ourselves, grow, and, you know, benefit from this wonderful moment is that the only thing, you know, I've been coming to India mm -hmm. as a filmmaker, as a writer, director since 2006. So, you know, I've been here for a long time. And I remember when I got here in 06, uh, you might find this entertaining. Um, there was a producer who came and met me. Names? And, uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, nobody uh, watches uh, this podcast. Uh, uh, well, nonetheless, nonetheless, a producer came to me and they said, you know, Jeff, Rhyming, you have to understand. Rhyming the name? No. Nothing? Uh, Astrology sign? Mother's name? It's somewhere in the 12 months of the calendar. Damn you. <laughs> but he, uh, he came to me and he said to me, and he said, Jeff, you have to understand something about Indian cinema. And I said, what is that? He said, most countries have two types of films. India has three. And I said, okay, fire away. And they said... Good films and bad films in every country in the world. Mm. India has good films and bad films and Salman Khan films. Uh, Ooh, and that nice. was – and, and you nice. know, I didn't – at the time, I wasn't sure what he meant. But yeah. after all these years, I get it, which is Salman Khan is his own genre yeah. unto himself. Yeah. Good and bad. like Jackie Chan. You can't really – yeah, I get that. Yeah, exactly. He yeah. has his own aisle in the supermarket. Yeah. But what I was going to say is um, – you know, the, so why can we name the producer? There's nothing bad. No, 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 no. I, don't, like, I honestly don't remember. Comment, Actually, this is, seven, this is 17 years ago, so I truly don't remember. Yeah. However, what I was going to say is that, you know, the only thing that I have really seen change in mm -hmm. all the years I've been here is performance, acting. And, and, and I would like to say that... Are we talking politics or acting, acting? No, acting, acting. Okay. You know, and I'd like to say that I had something to do with that or I knew that was coming. But the truth is I, I, I could, I would be giving myself too much credit. Ah. The, the truth is really this, is that we have watched, especially in the last five years with the explosion of the OTT platforms, mm -hmm. we've watched acting become the one staple that you can count on. You know, where before it used to be formulaic storytelling or different types of shots or different types of locations. No, no, no. Today, the thing that's really holding the gravity of things from this new show Korra, from Guns and Gulabs to Patalok, you know, everything you heard about during the pandemic and beyond, the first thing that people say is the acting is great. The performances are great. And that's really something that I think is uh, impressive. Uh, I totally agree with you because I've been watching OTT with the volume off. Mm -hmm. And yet I'm able to pick up what's going on. And that's only because of some superb acting. Yeah, no, the acting has really jumped yeah. off the screen. I like the way he ignores me. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I'm agreeing. I'm, I'm totally agreeing with you. I'm totally agreeing with yeah, you. Yeah. The acting has jumped off the screen. And, and I think that... We as a so studio have honest, been at the center of that. You've been training some of these guys, right? We have. We've changed a so lot of these So not to toot the old horn, but uh, can we name a couple? Yeah, like, sure. Um, if you saw... Raj DK project was, you, was uh, yours? Yeah, if you've seen Raj and DK's new project, uh, the love interest of Raju Kumar Rao's character, mm -hmm. TJ Banu is from our studio. Oh, wow. I've known TJ for... Do you get credit in the credits? No, 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 no. But no. then hopefully as they become big stars, they mention... You know what? It Look, was at Jeff's that it all started. It's, it's all about love, man. Yeah, yeah. It's all about love. The hippie, yeah. the hair is long, yeah. gone... But, you know, I, I still about the hippie for me. Um, so, you know, if you saw that show, if you saw Class, I don't know if you saw Class. But I heard about Class. Right. But, you know. uh, one of the leads in Class, Grafate Perzada, mm -hmm. he was with us for many, many years. Um, uh, this young woman who's doing quite well in lots of this different shows. This is Oshim Alubalia's thing. Oshim's right? yeah, team, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Then there was also uh, this other show called Guilty Minds in that was uh, Shriya Pelagankar. Oh. Shriya was with us many, many She's years ago. She's been on the podcast. Check it out. Shriya's great. Yeah. Uh, and hey, Shriya, if you're watching, I yeah. love you, darling. Um, 
So you know, do they get back to you then? Of course. I mean, you know, we're always in touch. It's all about the no, love. No, I mean, when the big project comes, do they get back to you? Um, sometimes they nip in to just continue their classes because we have a we have a rolling uh, admissions policy. I don't get it. What kind of Jewish man doesn't have a ten percent contract fee with these guys? No, you mean, you no, tie no. these monkeys down. When I first, it's like mutual funds. You got to get one that hits the market. No? When I first actually started the industry I rem- in the industry here, I remember um, I got a call about a, from a casting director, I, and I don't remember who this was, so I'm not not naming names. <laughs> you I know just, how petty the show is. No, Come no, no, no. on. We're all about I, names. No, I, I honestly don't remember who it was. And they, you know, they said to me, we're interested in this actor. Can you help us out? I was like, of course. And then they're like, okay, and what is your fee for this? And I, I was sort of taken aback. I was like, my fee for what? And they were like, um, for, you know, the, the actor. And I was like, I don't want to make money off on their back. Like, that's not my thing. Um, and I think one of the reasons that we've been able to stick around so long is that we've never had a financial relationship with our actors beyond them paying for their studies. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't owe them money. They don't owe me money. So it's all about the craft. It's all about the love. And it's all about the work. And then they move on. And then they move on. And as they should. And as they should, you know. um, How does it work in America in the Stella Adlers and the, uh, you know. know. Same, 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 same. You know, but in in my professional life, Cyrus, actually, I've spent very little time in the United States. I was in France for 10 years before I came here. So I've kind of moved Which brings us back to the filmmaking aspect. Because Mm -hmm. remember the first time we spoke, Mm -hmm. you're very much still the filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Is that got on the backseat? No, I'm still very much a filmmaker. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, my most recent feature film, Not Out, I'll plug it, just released on uh, Book My Show Stream. You can watch it. It's an LGBTQ story. Uh, so I, um, you know, from about 2015 to 2020 was pretty much pure theater, mm-hmm. pure theater. And then in 22, we staged uh, The Life and Death of Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. And that's where I parked it. I said, look, you know, I've done a lot of theater. I've, you know, gone all away. Yeah, I, I need to take a break because it's just getting massive. And, and there's it, no money. Well, that's not 100% true. How do you make money? Um, it depends upon how Naked you stri- theater makes money. Naked theater makes a lot of That's money. a little different. Naked yeah. anything makes a Julius lot of Caesar money. Caesar walks in, they stab him in the privates. Everybody's like, wow, look at there Caesar. There, there is a Caesar. Hey, hey, <laughs> if there ever was. When comes uh, such another. Yeah, very good. I'm impressed. <laughs> no pun. Uh, uh, very, very nice. Sorry. Um, and that is actually from the stabbing scene. Yeah. But um, nonetheless, uh, you know, um, I've parked theater for now. I um, mean, the studio, we're still producing theater. I, my 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 directors, uh, our instructors, they're all directing. I'm very happy to produce theater. But I personally, right now, I'm very interested in getting back to film. So I'm working on the script for my new th- my third feature. I'm also working on, um, actually, interestingly, what we hope to be the first Israeli-Indian co-production, which is why I was with uh, my friends at the Israeli Council. It's going to be a war. For a second. No, no, so I'm like, ah, no, no, ah no, people, no. let's attack some of, some of our neighbors. <laughs> no, the Israelis are yeah. really excited about yeah. India. Yeah. Um, so, um, well, yeah. I went to Tel Aviv in the meantime. Amazing, right? It's fabulous. Amazing city. But it's a very cosmopolitan feel, actually. Yeah. And everybody parties every day. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. Monday to Friday, people are out. With... I had a weird experience when I went to Tel Aviv because yeah. I went there to write. And you, Do you, you speak uh, Hebrew? I don't speak Yiddish? Hebrew, no. 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 I mean, I speak Yiddish, which yeah. is a language that it's we good had. enough. Right. I could get by. You know, I know when they're talking about yeah. me. But um, what was funny was, um, you know, I live in India, right? And I'm from New York. And even when I go to New York, I don't have this sensation that, like, everybody looks like me, right? Oh, when I got to Israel, I was like, everybody looks like a cousin, yeah. you know, because I'm not used to being around Jewish people yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know, like, it's a very weird thing for me. So I was like, my mother asked me, she's like, Jeff, what's it like? I'm like, really familiar in a strange, unusual way. Uh, and may I say one thing? Sure. The smell of uh, uh, a substance which is now legalized in most states in America, but not yet here, mm-hmm. was everywhere. Oh, it's ridiculous. Openly. No, no. And, I, and my, my pal wanted to imbibe, and you know, so I said, just talk to someone. It was mm-hmm. so friendly. Mm. Like everybody had stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no. it was the easiest thing in the world. Actually, when I went home in 22, I was shocked because you could not get away from it. It was like, why is this everywhere? Yeah, everywhere. You know, like I'm in front of a candy shop. Like, can we not? You know, like, <laughs> with my 11 year old son. Like, guys, like, can you go across the street? Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, no. I mean, but the world is changing. You know, and that's you know, coming back to the political thing you were saying. That's the thing about America that's so strange today. Is like, on one hand, it's going in this direction. On the other hand, it's going in that direction. And you know, you just don't know where to stand anymore because yeah. it's. It's a divided sort of uh, society in any case, I would say, which is a tribute to democracy. Uh, yeah. Because you have opinions, you have different styles, and still still working yeah. somewhat. Yeah. I mean, let's go to China and see how that plays out. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, things aren't so going so good over there, it exactly. sounds like. Absolutely. You know, it sounds like... Coming back to Tel Aviv for a second, I had another memory. Uh, the week we were there, it became the most expensive city to live in. Mm. So obviously, people aren't doing that badly. Because 
you know. Uh, I, you know, I think what's happening in Tel Aviv is kind of what's happening all over the world, which is exactly what we saw in New York and very much what we're seeing here in, in Mumbai is the rich are doing well, wow. extremely well, unbelievably well. Thank God, Jeff. Oh, sh- I'm so sorry. sorry. <laughs> and <laughs> the middle class, you know, we're yeah. just watching the ship sail further and further away from us. Um, purchasing power is vanishing. Salaries aren't going up. But, you know, for instance, I just heard the other day that the average cost of a one-bedroom apartment, which is not much larger than this studio here, Mm -hmm. New York City is going for $4,500. That's about three and a half lakhs. For one bedroom. For a one-bedroom. Nothing compared to Mumbai rates, but yeah, it's pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's just crazy. It's yeah. just I mean, who makes that kind of money? You know, uh, I mean, I mean, people do. So you're successful, and you still live in a bookie flat, which sounds exactly. like Mumbai story as well. There's a parallel with New York. Exactly. Have lots of people, mm-hmm. housing problem, mm-hmm. but not money problem in terms mm-hmm. of career and stuff, mm-hmm. but still housing problem, mm-hmm. which is a sad state of affairs in big cities like this. Yeah, for sure. I was when I was in New York mm-hmm. as a student. I spent. We were in a two bedroom apartment, five men. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was like the UN, mm. Greek, Indian, you know, mm. uh, Pakistani, mm. I mean, the works. Uh, Must have been fun. Yeah. Oh, mm. um, and my uh, Greek Jewish friend, his mm. name is Yanni. Okay. But John, mm-hmm. because Yanni, he explained mm. everything to me. So this, we had so much in common. Mm. We're the only two who never carried money. Mm. I loved him. I was mm. like, you're my man. Because you know? mm. everybody else carries money and walks around. Mm. And we're always like, do you have a dollar? Mm-hmm. You know, when we reached the shop, <laughs> <laughs> we nice. bonded so much. Nice. So it's very similar to cultures in, in many ways. Yeah, for uh, sure. But let's, let's get back to your career for a second. I sure. sidetracked in the middle. So you've got this uh, film on the LGBTQ yeah. space, which mm-hmm. is a hot topic right now. Yeah. World almost divided. Yeah. I mean, such uh, the rhetoric that we hear mm-hmm. and we watch on the internet, mm. it's ferocious. My son is in Canada studying, for example, and mm. that's like one of the hotbeds of mm. where this kind of fighting between let's call them right and left if you want to simplify it but mm-hmm. it's a little bit more than that mm. uh, so what's the film about well the film uh, it's actually it actually started as a play uh, that we did for many many years and it was just this one this is well before this movement became very active well you know I mean listen I, I, I grew up surrounded by the LGBT community, um, many people in my life and many very, very, very important people, people who are family to me are LGBTQ. So, you know, I've never seen LGBTQ as a thing. I mean, of course it's a thing and I understood that it's a community. You mean as a movement. Right, but it, not, no, what I mean is I never saw those people as different. You know, like for instance, you know, I was that kid, and you might find this funny, I was that kid in a, the growing up that I thought like racism, oh, we got rid of that. And, you know, sexism, well, that's over, you know, and, and, and discriminating against people of different sexual persuasions, that's over. You know, that never occurred to me. And then when I grew up and I realized people are still racist and still bigoted, I was like, really? I mean, I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I never, because I grew up around people of color and people of different religions and people of different sexual orientations, it never occurred to me that like everyone didn't have that in their life. So as I grew up and started to confront the crushing reality of a bigoted world, um, that's always kind of really hurt me in my core. So a lot of my work uh, in theater and on film has always been about, has an undercurrent of social, I wouldn't even say justice, just social awareness. Because bigotry, as far as I'm concerned, is easily one of the most inane, ridiculous things in the world. Like, guys, the science is telling us we're all the same. The society is telling us we're all the same. Like, why are we even still doing this? So, um, not out. The film came through. Not as, out. Not out. Like the cricket in a, term. In a cricket country. That's yeah. Confusing. Well, it's a play on yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and the story of the film is um, why we don't come out. Well, Oops, it's <laughs> there are a secret there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's about actually uh, um, the lead characters are Namit Khanna, who plays a poet, and Asham. Uh, Gulati, who plays a cricketer. And these two men... And they're lovers. And they're in love, right? They've been lovers for many, many years. And the film begins with the fact that they're no longer together, but the poet character has been brutally attacked, uh, and his former lover comes to find out about it. Mm. But now he has since moved on. He's doing quite well in his career. He's a top-shelf cricketer. He's married a woman, but he still lives this lie of being a homosexual man. But when he hears of the tragedy that has befallen his ex-lover, he can't help but run to his side. And it's about the tragedy of their love, which is as much as they're in love, as well as connected as they happen to be, they just can't be together because of the societal pressures that would just destroy both of them. So I didn't want to ask you this question. So do they see themselves as victims? 
Because, you know, everybody justifies their behavior in life. Mm. If you look at a psychotic killer or whatever, mm. because there have been some wrongs done to them. Mm. I mean, Hitler may have failed some exam and went berserk after that and didn't like the Jewish people because they may have judged his art. So mm. they say. But so there's some sort of justification in the person's uh, mind. So when you've gone through this as mm -hmm. a member of, let's say, the less conventional sexual brigade, mm -hmm. um, do they become worse for it? Mm -mm. And is it justified I then? I don't think it's a question of victimization. Um, you know, in terms of the film, these characters are just struggling with the very same thing that any couple, any two people who love each other go through. And one of the things that was very important to us as filmmakers, as actors, when we were making this film was that this is a love story. You know, the theme of the film is love is love and the tragedy of love and the joys of love do not recognize color or sexual orientation. It just finds its way into your heart, into your soul. And th so I, they're not victims at all in this film. As for, you know- I mean, in their own eyes. In their own eyes, look, I can't speak for any one individual person about his or her journey, and I would not relish the opportunity to. What I would say is this, is that we live in a world today where it is very hard to be LGBTQ anywhere in the world. And I am thrilled and proud of those people who live their lives in a holistic, truthful way. And I applaud them, I applaud their families, I applaud their communities for allowing them to do that. And it's ridiculous that we even have to use the word allow because it elicits the idea of permission. But sadly, there is a long, long road to fight. But then Jeff, sorry to play the devil's advocate, but what about the fact that uh, children being allowed to choose their gender at, age, at very tender ages? I mean, look, where do we draw the line? I'm you know, look, like, here's the deal. All right, I'll give you an example. Um, you may recall, uh, well, Donald Trump, let's just use him as an example right now. Opinions about the man aside, his guilt about what I think of it aside, the fact of the matter is, is that in a republic like India or the United States or any country, we have courts of law. We wrote laws. We have judges and juries and prosecutors and we have, uh, you know, advocates and whatnot. Let them do their job. Let them do their job because that – because uh, look, man. So you're just asking for a civic – a what, civil uh, and, reaction and, and, to everything and go, go via, via What I'm courts. saying is this. What I'm saying is this is like, look – People come to me to talk about acting or filmmaking because I'm an expert in that. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm an expert in medicine or engineering because I'm not. I'm not an expert. So, you know, how to build a bridge? Yeah, put some stuff Genetic up. Genetic engineering. Yeah. It's a whole new ballgame. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, you know, how to build a bridge? I don't know. You put some pylons Nobody in. knows in Bombay either. We've had four collapse last year. I know. Yeah. But, you know, what I'm saying is, is in terms of these questions of transitioning and gender and all the hysteria mm. and culture wars around it. Hey, listen, man. I'm not a specialist. I'm not a doctor. I can't weigh in with an opinion. My thing is okay about the kid thing. You know, again, where do you draw the line about who again, decides when at what age, etc.? I think, as he, you would with sexuality and conventional sexuality. My view is this. My view is very simply this, and this is you know um, a very simple way to put it. But hey, man, you're not paying my bills. You're not putting food on my table. You're not living my life. And thank you very much for your opinion. But your opinion. Okay, so the individual is king is what you're saying. It's not a question of individual. I think it's a question of let the people who know how to do their jobs do their jobs. You know, for instance, I'll give you an example. Great example, right? AI right now. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's bumbling and fumbling to figure out AI. And, you know, you even hear the top, top shelf people out of Silicon Valley being like, yeah, government has to regulate this. And someone put it really succinctly, which was government's going to regulate AI. These guys don't even know the difference between dial-up and Wi-Fi. They still haven't regulated social media because, you know, I'm sure we all remember that time Mark Zuckerberg went to Congress and he gave yeah. that interview. I mean, the questions they asked him were literally like, where's the button to switch it on? Right. OK. <laughs> mm. and so the fact of the matter is, is, is that asking individuals who have zero knowledge about a particular thing to legislate something for hundreds of millions, billions of people is not only naive, it's cruel and unfair. It's taking a butter knife to surgery, and that's not what you do. You use an expert tool with an expert hand. Or you turn to Ayurveda, old okay. Indian medicine. No, don't worry about anything. Four good brown colored pills from Himalaya. <laughs> Their potential sponsors be nice. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back and now we'll talk more politics. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, we can talk anything because Jeff is mm. open and game to talk about anything. Mm. Stay with us mm. uh, for a short break. Mm.
Hey, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcasts Network. We have a brand new show called A Century of Stories presented by IDFC First Bank. The first episode is a story about our beloved national anthem and it is out now. Tune into any podcasting app or YouTube to listen to many more such heard and unheard stories about India. On the Habit Coach Ashton is joined by Zoe Chance, a distinguished professor from Yale and an accomplished author. Zoe discusses the techniques for effective communication touching upon the art of persuasive dialogue and also the difference between face-to-face interactions versus the virtual realm. On all things policy, Anupam Manur and Shri Krishna Upadhyay discuss India's failed trade policies, the import restrictions creating a competitive environment in the domestic manufacturing sector and how the notification will lead to a rich tapestry of red tapism. So folks, if you like our show, spread the word, tell your friends and don't forget to rate and review them wherever you're listening to them. Follow us on social media via IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. You'll also find all our shows on youtube.com slash IVM Podcasts. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsor this week, IDFC First Bank. Thank you for making this possible. Our break is over. Oh, wow. We're back Lovely. again. Oh, someone's in a hurry. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I was running late. I felt no, no. so bad about that. I, I, I'm a premature ejaculator for the last 10,000 years. Nice. Know, nice. Speaking, yeah. So glad you yeah. put that out yeah. there. <laughs> I always like to, I like, I for me, glamorizing faults is very important. It's, because you come to terms with it also. You yeah, know, you own it. What's the point? Sure. Yeah. It's, it's it's the greatest source of comedy. It, it, you've, you've gone for the, you know, the hellish look. But there's so many men who deal with that in such a bad way. Mm. But they pretend it's not happening or whatever. My hair is sort of falling now. Mm. You just got to accept it. Well, I, actually, uh, what I would tell any individual, woman or man, yeah. shave your head. And I, I, you know, I mean, you know, and I, join the Dalai Lama. No, um, <laughs> it is unbelievably liberating. I remember when I shaved my head for the first you time. You mean before. just like a one-off? Yeah, I did it for a character. And, you know, I had the same trepidation as anyone else, you know, and I've changed my look a lot over the years. I've gained weight, I've lost weight, you know, beards, no beards, you know, everything, long hair. But shaving the head felt like a little bit of a Rubicon. And when I crossed it, I got to tell you, it was the most liberating feeling because of two things. One was because, you know, it made life a lot easier in terms of shampoo. But secondly, it was also quite a... Jewish, just yeah, like us. Yeah. Straight away, no conditioner, no shampoo, no comb, no barber, no hairdresser, no it, massage, no hair oil. It makes everything Look at easier. the money you save, brother. Exactly. Amazing. Time as well. There you go. But the other thing was you never realize how much people put into the importance of their hair and their self-image. And your own self-image and how sparse our producer. Yeah, he's how, all about the hair. How wrapped up are you getting it? it it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but no, you know, I think you know. We get validation. Yeah. Some it, people just have good genetics when it comes to hair, so they you know flaunt it. I well, mean, like you would if you you know, looked a certain way or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Which I would never know, but you know, I heard uh-huh. famous people, rich people talk about things like that. For sure. Yeah. For sure. But no, I mean, you know, and the thing is, as an actor, you, you know, you're constantly changing your look, and I think that that's one of. The greatest things about having been in the arts for as many years as I have been is that, you know, every project is a new start. You start from zero every single time. You, you know, your career is constantly in flux, which, you know, sometimes is a little bit scary when it comes to your bank account. Hmm. But um, in terms of creativity and nurturing that bone within yourself, it's really, really lovely. And, you know, one of the things that I think, just coming back to our, our studio, one of the things that I think, you know, you're asking me about what's kept it going all these years is... I think, you know, we, we've really developed a technique. My colleagues and I, we've really developed something where we can now call it the JGS technique, where, of course, it's borrowing from a lot of different streams of other, you know, schools of acting. But the premium and the idea behind our work has always been get it done and, you know, make sure it's a good for the action and cut of whatever you're trying to achieve in between action and cut. And we've been really fortunate to have great students come through the the doors over the years. And it's been really, really exciting. And like I said, I think the thing that's really kind of become the glue in Indian cinema today from north to south, east to west, is performance. Well, you brought this up. Sorry, again, Mm -hmm. I got distracted with action and cut. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, discussing this with, uh, watching, what was it, Tom Hanks? Discuss Mm -hmm. Clint Eastwood's technique of, Mm -hmm. you know, we're ready or whatever. Mm-hmm. Never uses the word action mm-hmm. or cut because mm-hmm. apparently the horses would bolt when you scream action really loudly in mm-hmm. the cowboy films mm-hmm. that he did in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking, you know, maybe action is like passe now. Well, I action is too loud. You go into a tragic scene or whatever, and you're shouting at the top of your, you know, he very, action. Yeah, very intuitive. Actually, yeah. I was just uh, working with some actors down in uh, 
Goa with another project, the director whom I've worked with, uh, we were resurrecting an old script of ours. I was speaking with the actors offline, and I said, you know, the worst word for actors is action because they think they have to do something. Uh, you're hyped with that. So if it's right. a hyper scene, I don't mind. Mm. If they're all screaming at a club or something. Oh, action! Everybody's action. So what I use now is I just use just be. You know, just be the character. Just be in the moment. Just be in the emotion. I say just be. So Clint and, Uncle says something like that when but, you're ready or whatever. Just you know, quietly. Well, you know, Clint can say whatever he yeah. wants at this point. I mean, yeah. you know, he's, uh, he's, he's had a career that, you know, will never happen again. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, the I guy... Had he used, what, eight words per film? Well, you know, I mean... I've seen them all. I'm yeah, a big fan. No, he's, he's amazing. Yeah. He's a yeah. great filmmaker and a great actor and just a unbelievable human 90? being. Still working? I think he's 92? Something. Just did a film? Yeah. Well, you know. so on his feet, he's, yeah, I mean, he's amazing. I mean, I mean you know, they're, they're going to be filming his in, his funeral probably, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. Jewish as humor? Yeah. <laughs> Draw the line. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little dark humor. <laughs> he's worse than me now. Yeah, well, What's hey, going yeah. on? Thunderclap. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, but yeah, I think action is a little passe. Um, just I, I still don't understand why they have to do that. Mm -hmm. Love making scene, for example. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you start laughing mm -hmm. if the girl and you? In any case, it's awkward. It's I've like, never uh, had an intimate scene, so I wouldn't know. I was just thinking, if you had to film it as a director, are you really going to? I mean, you've got, let's say, I don't know, Priyanka Chopra and uh, the intimate scenes I've dealt with. Yeah, you got to be, you know, and, you got to shout action. Yeah, you know, when you're directing an intimate scene, you've got to be very because, especially, you know, it's it's not just there's nothing more vulnerable than physical intimacy, right? You know, that's all about permission. And there are people around. It's not yeah. intimate. In exactly. You're giving permissions to people to see you vulnerable in ways I that... I want to do the podcast naked once with the guests just to see what it feels like. Just you let it go. pull it off? Yeah, you, I think you I could. Mean, you and me aren't the right fit for that. It's got to yeah. be like, uh, you know, someone who's a little awkward. I think you and I will be okay. I'd be fine. Yeah, I know. So yeah. I don't really care. After yeah. five minutes, what difference does it really make? Yeah. Nothing hey. to look at anyway. We are, we, no one's going to even bother. We all got the yeah. same plumbing, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah, some yeah. got shortchanged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, but I think, I think, you know, honestly, man, I think there's way too much uh, importance put on that whole short changed thing. Yeah, I know. You know. But I, let me just uh, quickly tell you because we shot this film called Penthouse which may be released one day, who knows. Mm -hmm. And there was a lovemaking scene with a mm -hmm. lovely lady and I had to, can you believe it, I had mm -hmm. a short scene as expected. Mm -hmm. But uh, they would only talk to me. Mm -hmm. The director would not speak to her. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was so awkward, you know, after some mm -hmm. time. Well, I, mean, I think that's also because in the post Me Too world, yeah, that, that, that bit of that was the reason with all males. Yeah. But I was just thinking that two people in the scene, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, I mean, yeah, well, but I mean, honestly, I think that filmmakers and, and, and at large society hasn't had a proper conversation about, like, how we address all of this. You know, we dropped all these truth bombs and, like, we're just sitting there letting them fester into the ground and pollute everything. But we haven't had honest conversations. But our love scenes on the podcast, all unedited. Unscripted, <laughs> we just go for it. You just go for it? Boom, boom. Just throw the tables out Clint, of the way. Clint's voice is in the yeah. background. Yeah. Start. We're ready. When you're ready. <laughs> we're <laughs> we're ready. Yeah. Uh, uh, nice. Okay, let's, let's quickly talk politics before uh, I rush out of here and leave you to enjoy the place. Uh -huh. Sorry? Oh, we have the AMAs as well. Uh -huh. and there are lots for you, uh -huh. okay. uh, budding actors. Uh -huh. uh, but before that, Ukraine, Russia. Now that started. Uh, we last time we discussed everything, so mm -hmm. we need to at least hit a couple of key issues. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the whole? I mean, it started almost one and a half years have mm -hmm. passed when he entered Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. It's like a stalemate. Mm -hmm. Where they're fighting the soxes off uh, yeah. and defending the land or whatever, and they mm -hmm. get a lot of support from the West. Mm -hmm. But what's Russia's exit plan here? Oh God! Uh, I'm you know I'm not sitting inside the Kremlin, so I I, I mean Putin doesn't. I don't know, think ask for it's updates. just one man. I really don't think anybody else has. Uh, well, that's here. true, but I think uh, you know I, my view of it is this: is in this post-truth world we live in, we're not allowed to call things by name. But the fact of the matter is, is that. Since probably the invasion of Iraq in 2003, we've been fighting a protracted, almost in slow motion, third world war. And the battlefield keeps switching from places like, you know, uh, Syria and Sudan and Yemen. But, you know, you know, the five big UN Security Council members, their arms and their armaments are front and center. Their soldiers are front and center. And Ukraine is just the biggest theater in this theater of war that has been going on, this masqueraded third world war. And I think the reason that there's so much interest in and around it, of course, and justifiably is because people are dying. But let's be very clear, and this is something that even Syrian journalists and Middle Eastern journalists pointed out when the war began, there's a degree of, well, look, they're white people in Europe. 
And the fact of the matter is, is that when brown people or yellow people from different parts of the world were showing up on European shores, they weren't welcoming them. They weren't welcoming Syrian refugees any more than they were welcoming Sudanese yeah. refugees. Except Germany. I'll give them okay a little bit. Of you know, that. sure, yeah. Germany. I mean, you know, for instance, there's this uh, terrible fact. It's not a fun fact at all that Sweden, which was neutral during the Iraq war, accepted more Iraqi refugees than the United States and the UK combined. Okay, I just saw a story about Afghan girls who escaped to continue their education to Rwanda. I mean, you know, and here we are, you know, and I, and I appreciate all of the wonderful wokeness that goes on in the West and all of the beautiful language about equality, but it's equality at, 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 with, with a very, 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 very strong caveat, which is, you know, hey, listen, your problems, keep them over there, and you people of color, keep them over there. But I think to come to your point about Ukraine and, and Russia, it's a third world war. This is just another battle so in the third you world war. You nuclear? No. No, 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 no. I don't think uh, Putin will go nuclear because um, – I don't think it's because he's worried about America blowing him up, which they would, I think. It's that the film Oppenheimer, which I think is a flawed film but nonetheless definitely worth viewing, brings to the fore something that is very important, that the single time in our history where – Nuclear weapons were used on a people mm. were August 6th and August Ninth. 8th, and we don't yeah. ever want to do that again. Uh, we don't ever want to do that again. 120,000 people were incinerated in a matter of seconds. Many ridiculous. hundreds of thousands yeah. died later. And let's, you know what, we did this. We did this. Let's not do this again. And Putin, and, and I don't know the man. the fact that, you know, cruel to be kind, less will die in the long run, those Put, kind of things. That, that, that it, kind it was of, all rubbish. Yeah. It was all rubbish. I mean, the historical scholarship shows that we didn't have to do it. Of, yeah, exactly. But to come to Putin... Putin, if he's anything, is a student of history. And he recognizes, unlike many of our leaders today, and I'm not a pro-Putin person by any stretch of the imagination, but he recognizes You're his... just like men bareback horse riding. Totally. Um, it's my thing. That's what we share. Turns me on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Gets me going. There you go. Uh, you know, but um, he recognizes his place in history. And I think that he does... He's okay with being known as a butcher, but I don't think he's but okay Where he is being, now, where does he go if it's a, a chessboard? Where he is now, he's not really able to advance, you know? I mean, but he's the point. Still, but, there, but there's still one thing where he holds all the marbles. One-eighth of the land on our planet mm -hmm. is the Russian Federation. He controls one-eighth of the land. And as the glaciers up north start to melt, and as those fossil fuel fields become available, that whole coastline is his, and he knows it. A lot, there's a fact that a lot of people forget. On the eve of the crash of the Soviet Union, who was the largest exporter of oil to the world? And it wasn't Russia. Saudi Arabia. It was Russia. It was the Soviet Union. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is— We get our oil from them. A lot right. Of and the fact of the matter is until we go green, and this is not just a pitch to go green because I fully believe in that, of course, is whilst we remain addicted to fossil fuels, he holds all the cards. He does. He, there's no doubt about that. Add to which, okay, let's say we go green. The reality is, is that 10% of the drinkable water on the planet Earth is in Lake Bakal, one lake in Russia. He knows that, okay? The Ural Mountains have permafrost that we're, we will be drinking, cities like Bangalore need right now. So the fact of the matter is, is that he holds a lot of cards. And of course, Biden and everyone else wants to rattle sabers and sell F-16s, and, and they should. What he did was wrong. What he did was downright crazy. Jeff, you're confusing me. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> but but the point. But the point. But the point is this: yeah. is that in the post-truth world, nobody wants to have real conversations. Nobody wants to look at history unless they have, you know, the ability to white out the parts they don't want to read or listen to, and that's what's dangerous. In my view, I think that we are living through a third world war, and I think that unfortunately, very unfortunately, the Ukrainian people are suffering that. But so are the Sudanese. So are the Yemenis. So are the Burmese. Uh, we spoke about Biden. We spoke the last time about Trump and this and that mm -hmm. and who will be the next. Has Biden been a disappointment or do we make too much out of the optics that we see on the internet in terms of him fumbling and well, he's an old man? I think it's got very little to do with policy. Just his, the optics of him as a mm -hmm, person mm -hmm. uh, to be viewed in public. I think, I think Biden has done a great job. Uh, you know, look, I'm not going to sit here and say 
go vote Democrat because he's also had a lot of blind spots. But I think that Biden's doing the best he can. And the thing that I like about Joe Biden is, you know, he is a Kennedy Democrat. You know, he grew up, he cut his teeth. At, a Kennedy in, Democrat who pulled out of Afghanistan just like that? Okay, Afghanistan, I mean, look, that is such a tragedy. That is such, I mean, you know, the Afghan people have been abandoned in such a way that is so... I, mean, I don't, I mean, I don't even know an adjective. for hours after all that hard work. It was just ridiculous. But the thing is, you know... I was about to fly out to Kabul myself and mm, do a comedy program. Mm, but they mm. said it wouldn't last more than 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the, that situation is so incredibly heartbreaking and sad, and, and there really are no adjectives. And, and certainly that's not why Jeff time. is voting Donald Trump for 2024. No, definitely. <laughs> my father would... Uh, is he? Not, no, is he? are you mad? My father would kill me. Uh, I'd be disowned. Is there uh, a, like Jewish American vote? Uh, like there is... The, oh, no, it's split. It's all rubbish, right? It's There's split. no one type vote anymore. It's split. Even the black vote, Hispanic vote, doesn't just go to anyone. Well, I think African Americans, you know, view well, themselves... Republican? I mean, look, I mean, you know, I think we're talking about diverse peoples with divergent opinions and mm -hmm. divergent beliefs. And I think it's okay that we're diverse. And like you said, you know, the song of democracy has many, many different, uh, you know, uh, pitches and tones and keys, and as it should. But I think what is unfortunate today with American politics is what you said, the optics and culture wars. We're not talking to each other about policy and improvement. We're talking to each other about identity and, you know. I think we've come a long way because we gave them Priyanka Chopra. We said, okay, we'll let mm -hmm. go one of our best. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And we did that. Mm -hmm. I think as, as a people, we can't do more for America. You know? Well, you, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, you very much. You but, you know, I, I believe, Priyanka, I... Oh, I uh, and Israel, we gave you Zubin Mehta. That, well, thank you. Conductor full time. So we've done a lot yeah, for you, many countries. You're very giving. You're yeah, very you know, giving. You guys and are we don't ask for anything back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever happens. Yeah, well, you guys are awfully generous. Well, you're very, very... Look, generous. I'm not government. Yeah. So don't, yeah. I don't want to, you know, well, don't put me up there. No, I'm not putting you there. But I'm just saying that, you know, India is a very generous place. I have a better chance in Russia at the moment in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, reaching to the top. But uh, yeah. we have the EMAs, which okay. are questions that come in, authentic questions, which mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. now he's handwritten for me mm -hmm. because okay. he doesn't trust me to use a phone or an uh, uh -huh. actual uh -huh. laptop. Okay. So this is from Spaceman. Uh -huh. uh, parents named him thus, so uh -huh. we can't argue. Uh -huh. Jeff, please tell us three iconic Indian film roles that you would love to play or would have loved to play. Oh, um well, actually, there's a film that I always cite to people, uh, Shakti, 1982, Amitabh yeah, yeah, Bachchan. Yeah, Dilip Kumar. Dilip Amitabh Kumar, Bachchan. Amitabh yeah, Bachchan. Yeah. Uh, I love this movie. Oh, great film. I love this movie. Yeah. It's online. Which one would you want to play? I want to play Amitabh's character. The young, you know, the, the young, the son, yeah, brooding, yeah. trying to figure it out. I'll play Dilip Kumar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, if anyone's listening, yeah. go right ahead. That's a fabulous. Call for your sense of theater. And that's all. It's just conflict uh, just, between uh, two father oh, and son. Oh God, he's just so good in that movie. You know, and you're watching yeah. him, and oh, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah, just so. So I think I'd like to play uh, Amitabh Bachchan's character in uh, Shakti, uh, because I absolutely. Um, just loved what he did there. Yeah. Another role I would love to play, and I, my hat is off to this actress, uh, Konkena Sun Sharma. Konkena Sen, yeah. Konkena Sen Sharma, yeah. In um, Telvar, in when she's in Telvar, Telvar okay. you know, um, because uh, the way that Magna Glazar made that film, they had a lot of different times where they went in to go find their daughter, uh, you know, after she had been killed. And they had to play it a lot of different ways. Mm. And I just thought, while I was watching her this is the do this, mother. yeah, I just kept watching. Like, how are you getting ready for this? Like, how are you preparing for this? Like, what an amazing piece of work! So, I'd actually like to play that role. I know it's it's, it's, it's probably angry, you know, hurt son, grieving mother. Yeah. Man, where's the comedy gone uh, in this room? <laughs> and um, you know, and third, uh, one? third one. Let me give this a quick think. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, one of my favorite films of all time is uh, Satyajit Rai's film Jal Sagar. Also called the Music Room. It's a beautiful film from the nineteen. More Hindi films and Bengali films uh, than I am. Uh, so embarrassing for me to be an Indian here. Uh, beautiful you can switch. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> film, and it's um, it's set in um, the early uh, 50s, 60s in West Bengal, and this former this Maharaja. Uh, you know, um, the world is changing around him, and he is just not equipped to deal with that. And he's totally lost. And it's just an amazing movie about how India and the Republic of India. 
and the Maharaja India, the Raj Can't India, keep completely. Up with the progress. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just such a beautiful film, and, and I'd play anything in that film. Yeah. You know, I would play you know his 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 his, his assistant. Sagar. Yeah, Joss Sagar. Just what a movie! Like, it sounds like a building in Apensi Road right now, but I'm sure uh, no disrespect. It's yeah. a great, film. great film, great film, and Satyajit really, Rai. You really such watch a, a lot of Indian cinema. I love Indian cinema. Yeah, I'm I mean, a huge believer in Indian cinema. Wow. I love I love what's going on in I this country. I wish I had your patience. After ten minutes, I always watch porn. Ah, For some okay. reason, I just you know and. I don't That's, care. <laughs> there's a lot of Indian cinema there too. There you know? is, there is, there is. With sounds, subtitles. It's hey, hey, well done. Very interesting. Yeah. You can speak both languages and you see where, what's right and wrong. For sure. Okay, Jeff, next one. Any recent watch on Indian OTT that you would recommend and like? Um, recent. Ooh, interesting, interesting question. You mean uh, Guns and Gulab? I think. You I haven't taken a look at that yet because yeah. it just, just came out. Um, Indian OTTs, what have I looked at recently that I really, really like? Whatever comes to mind, it doesn't okay. have to be so recent. Uh, no, fair enough. Um, you know, actually, uh, I looked at class, and um, I looked at class, of course, because I some but, of my but students... But that's a, were, make, a, a remake of a, a Spanish remake, yeah, show. Yeah, remake of a Spanish show. Um, I enjoyed that, you know, and Ashim is a friend, and, you know, yeah. uh, I just know what kind of filmmaker he is. He's independent, art house to the core. And I was just thrilled to see a guy like me break through and do something like that. I was really, really proud of him. Also, uh, one of his writers, Kersi Kambata, is a dear yeah. friend, hmm. uh, you know, so I was really thrilled to take a look at that and see how they were doing. We're same school, actually, Osham, and he's a little junior to me. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. but a mm -hmm. richer father, mm -hmm. as far okay. as I remember. <laughs> okay. Yeah. These things you don't forget. Yeah, okay. Sounds Fancy good. Fancy car brought him to school Well, you used to walk. For sure. Miles For without sure. food and water. Ah. <sighs> So also, I, I really, really uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, please. I also really, ignore me. Yeah, no, no, I'm ignoring I'm you at all. I'm just here to kill time. Uh, yeah. No, um, uh, you know. Also, uh, I loved watching uh, Patalok. Um, I thought oh. that was great. Ishwak Singh. Uh, you know, Ishwak, if you're listening, what's up, buddy? How are you? Um, great, great, great performances. Um, you know, I really enjoyed the storytelling there. I know the guys just came out with Cora, which is their um, the oh, same I saw team. That. Yeah, I haven't I taken a look at it. Yeah. Uh, Charles blew my mind. Uh, I'm back. Uh, Cora, my okay. wife forced me to watch it. Uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah I heard it was yeah. really really good yeah. so you know and i think the ott space has been really exciting for us actually get to see real india yeah to them you know because they really mix it up exactly some of the characters are mm -hmm. spot on not yeah. always but sometimes they're spot on yeah for sure the, the, the too much glamour that happens in hindi films that that goes away i mean not that i like that too mm -hmm. but it's nice to see a real slice of life you know? absolutely you the village in punjab you can you've been there you've seen those people it's people are ready for that that's what they yeah. want absolutely yeah but then again we do need priyanka chopra yeah so well. can you please send her back uh -huh. join us Guys, unbelievable. Mm. We're just supposed to be a dance or something. Mm. Next thing, they have kids. Mm. It's ridiculous. So, uh, Manish says, hello, Jeff, sir. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Respect that. My question to you is, if you had to define method acting with mm. a dialogue, with mm. a dialogue, mm -hmm. what would it be? To uh, use a dialogue to... To use a dialogue, um, uh, I've got two um, that I would use. Both are Shakespeare. Uh, and I know he doesn't usually get identified as method actor, he's, he's but um, I think the first one that you can definitely use, Manish, is uh, to be or, or not, not to be. be. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think question. that is the question. That is definitely the question. Uh, but another one that comes to mind, it would be Macbeth's, um, is that a dagger I see before me, handle towards my hand, come, let me clutch thee. Uh, I think that both those uh, dialogues really represents something about the experience of being a method actor, which is bringing it as close to yourself as humanly possible and always working from that instinct of yourself. Although the last dialogue was also very often heard in Nagpada, Mumbai. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a dagger? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I see. You've got to be a little careful when you go to get your car serviced. For sure. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to help you because you're still, you know, I don't know how well you know the culture. No, no, I know the culture. Because you know, I know more yeah. about the films yeah. than I do. Uh -huh. oh, embarrassing, yeah. man, yeah. really. Uh, uh oh, this is from Kaninja Tomna. Oh, mm -hmm. I can't read properly. I apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, Kamijor. Kamijor. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Toma. How mm -hmm. many acting techniques are there? Because uh, Juliard and Rada have developed their developed their own. Is there a quantity of the acting techniques? I, I don't, you know, you I, I think um, acting techniques, certainly there are, are traditional schools of acting and there are certainly accepted techniques. But I think, you know, in this post-modern world where everything's eclectic and borrowing from each other, which is great, um, I think there are as many techniques as there are people out there doing it. 
And I think that's exactly the way it should be. I think, you know, acting as all the arts was never designed to be a monolithic I, I thing. Mean, your question is, is it more like a science and a craft or more like an art? That's what they kind of, you know, uh, it's a craft. Things it's a craft. It's a craft. I mean, there's definitely some science mixed in there. There's definitely some art mixed in there, but it's a craft and it has to be practiced and it has to be learned and you have to train. I mean, you know, the one thing I tell young actors all the time and, you know, I'd love to share with your listening audience because clearly they're probably here to hear me talk about acting. Train. You've got to train. There's just no question about that. You have to learn your craft. And I'll actually add an addendum to that, which is learn the Indian arts. Learn the classical arts too. Learn Bharanatyam. Learn Kathakali. Learn, uh, you know, um, anything that... Right. You know, just, just, just get... Just get connected to your culture through the arts and learn acting train as an actor because that's the thing that's going to carry you through your career is your craft all right so you have to work in it mm -hmm. you can't just turn up and do a podcast uh -huh. um shakuni says what names if you had to train uh, cyrus to act mm -hmm. what would your first three lessons be why do they always have three mm -hmm. let's do uh, one lesson my first my first lesson to cyrus yeah. would be um I would give you a strict diet of... Well, I went to Strasbourg okay. in a four-month course. Oh, did you? Like in 94, yeah. Okay, very, very Hot good. Hot chicks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just Glad you remember that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, Al Pacino came by. Oh, yeah. He's, day, he's, 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 uh, ex, he's uh, the... He's No, no, no. He's also the uh, president, um, the honorary like that, president yeah, of the program. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Look like any other Indian guy in Delhi. Okay. You know, the scarf and thing and whatever. Mm -hmm. So those piercing. Of course, he's that, but you know, everybody gave him space. For sure. I saw Denzel on the streets of New York, just the, walking. Yeah, Denzel's imagine, amazing. Imagine Amitabh Bachchan walking on the streets, you know, with nobody bothering him. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a life, really. He can't yeah. even do that in New York, Amitabh. Mm -hmm. He can't. You know? No, surely not. Sorry. Uh, no, first thing I would uh, do to train Cyrus would be um, I would uh, give him a strict diet of no talking. Well, that's true. Uh, yeah. And that would be because, Science. you know, uh, as a method actor, it's about going inside yourself. And the more you talk, it's not that talking is bad. And, you know, mm -hmm. having the gift of the gab is a beautiful thing. It's a real genuine, sincere gift. But nonetheless, you need some time to sort of inhale to yourself. Second thing I'd ask him so to I'm do. I'm like my therapist, uh, but cheaper. Uh, yeah. Second thing I would uh, tell him to do is work on stillness. Um, That's damn tough. Yeah, sure. I can't I sit know. still for a second. I know. I know. I'm I mean, sure. Everything's I'm moving. Sure. I'm sure. Well, the one thing that should move isn't, but everything else is. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> uh, and then the third thing I would get you doing is scene work, you know, because that's really where you learn how to figure it out is when you're actually doing it, you know, and that's the thing is you just got to do it. Acting is, a, is, is, is about getting on the pitch and playing the game. It's not about talking about it. Yeah. I was on Streetcar Named Desire. Mm. I, I, I did the whole Stella thing. Uh, did you I really? I freaking Brando. Yeah. I bought it. Nobody else did. You played Stanley Kowalski. Yeah, I did. Good for you. Yeah, Bravo. Yeah. I've done Rocky One. By the way, they love Rocky One in Strasbourg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was an amazing film. Rock, Rocky One's like iconic. Yeah. Not so much respect to the other Rockies, but Rocky One. Well, yeah. Is, is, and is, you know, Stallone wrote the film. from the heart in three days. Yeah. yeah. yeah amazing. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, underrated guy in many ways. Oh, I don't think so. No? I think people recognize him. No, I'm, I'm saying as a comedian, for example, I've watched him. Uh, what is the one where he plays the Italian gangster? Uh, oh, uh, it's hilarious! Oscar, I Oscar. Oh, I haven't seen, seen it. No, oh, he's fantastic. There's a great film of his. Yeah. Um, gosh, what's it called? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a film of his where he plays a down and out, beat up, washed up cop. Copland. 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 Oh, that's hey. fantastic. Where he yeah. puts on weight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fabulous. Yeah. He's a great actor, and I mean, I, I think when you say people don't respect him enough. I think people respect him yeah. enormously. Well, remember, you Adrian, Adrian. Yeah, but that, you, you know? know, but we all have a, you know, everybody that. St that achieves that degree of stardom is going to have one role that just kind of follows them everywhere they go. Have you seen the Indian Rocky with Sanjay Dutt? I have not. It's more like Rocky, not Rocky, but it's there. Okay. Check that out. That's right. your next time. That's your lesson. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. Okay. I've what do to. you like the about, what do you like the most, I guess, about teaching and acting? Oh, about teaching acting, sorry. What do you like the most about teaching acting? I love watching someone learn. I love watching someone who's struggling with a scene or struggling with their confidence or struggling with the emotional beat that they're trying to achieve. I love watching them get it. Uh, you and know. not help them. Well, well yeah, no, you're there. <laughs> you, so much fun. Yeah. You suck. Do it again. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you know, I'm reminded of, of a story, actually. Um, there was a young woman who just had uh, her first performances at our studio, and um, her name is Simran, because I know you're into names. Mm. Hey, Simran, if you're watching. Mm. And I recall, uh, yes, I'm telling this story, Simran. I recall, you know, um, 
when she first came to the studio, you know, she was like, Jeff, I can't get on stage. I'm so nervous. I can't, you know, I can't do this class. And I said, don't worry, you'll get it. You'll just take your time. And, you know, three months later there, she was killing it, killing it in her first performances, uh, you know, in front of an audience on stage. And she just was effortless. And, you know, she but did Can it. you tell if people have it or not? Or, or do they grow and you have no idea? I, you know. Like, I, like from A to Z is a long, sometimes a long process. In I'm community. usually pretty good at giving myself credit, but. I do not have that special power, uh, but to be honest with you, I don't. I don't believe in that. I know there is a lot of talk out there about you know you either have it or you don't. You know your mm -hmm. eyes smile or they don't. I don't believe in that. I believe like look, this is my belief: is that acting, if it's about truth, everybody can tell the truth. It's about developing the confidence within yourself and the tools within yourself to achieve that. I believe that. Now, how many truths you have to tell? How many characters you'll have the opportunity with whom to do that? That's not necessarily something you can predict. But everybody has at least one or several truths within them. I'm a believer in, as long as you do the work, you will get there. I'm a big believer in that. And that's not because I'm an educator of acting. It's because I'm also a audience of acting. And I've seen this from the most incredibly different, diverse groups of people. So, you know, this idea that you have to look a certain way, do a certain thing is totally false as far as I'm mm -hmm. concerned. And I love the fact that today in mainstream, you know, Indian cinema, we're seeing more diverse looks, more diverse people, more diversity, and that's great, and I embrace that. Okay, there's one last question as we end, and it's from Abbas, who's uh, one of our strongest uh, podcasters and employee here, uh, a comedian by, uh, you know, that's his trade. Mm. He's in a film, path-breaking movie with Abhishek Bachchan mm. right now, mm. and his worry is for the next role, he may have to do a nude scene. Mm. Could he come in to the Jeff Goldberg studio and... Well, I thought we were doing our first nude here, uh, you know, so uh, he could start here. Uh, uh, that's a little personal, is, Jeff. Well, I was just kidding uh, around, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm not really comfortable. No, know? I'm teasing. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, you know, look, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm happy to take, bring in any actor who's struggling with any challenge that he or she may have. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, of course. You He's know. a horrible actor, Jeff. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. He's a lovely guy. Uh, all right, Jeff, that's all we have time for. Cheers. Uh, yeah, thank you for taking some time out and coming and meeting us. Oh, and my pleasure. Please come back and chat with our panel because yeah. we were always interested in your views. Thank on, you. On not just India, but, yeah. you know, the world at large. That's very kind. Thank you. Yeah, it's always fun to hear. Jeff, yeah. and if you want to join the Jeff Goldberg studio, just go online. Yeah, sure. You're all, all, Fairly simple. Instagram, uh, Facebook, online, you know, just reach out to us, uh, drop us a message, you know, come on by and, you know, uh, we're more than happy to talk about acting, filmmaking, theater, you, your dreams, uh, and, and where you want to get to and, and how you want to get there. And as we see by the names that have come out of the studio, mm -hmm. DiCaprio, mm -hmm. Johnny Depp. <laughs> I mean, I was so amazed to hear all these big names. Paul Newman was gone now, you know, <laughs> back. Montgomery Cliff, one of the first method actors. Montgomery Spencer, Cliff. Uh, like, Spencer Tracy, I don't know, you guys won't even remember these names. Yeah, of course, I don't know. Who yeah, they you are. know, but yeah, I'm just yeah, saying, because yeah, they came yeah, out of your studio. Yeah, of course. Trained obviously, all of them. Obviously, yeah. yeah, sure. Right up to uh, Tiger Shroff. Yeah, so, oh, right up to Tiger yeah, Shroff. Right? You, right, you, you, you <laughs> landed the plane perfectly. <laughs> right on a dime. Oh, he's going to beat me up. No, hardly, <laughs> hardly, hardly, hardly. Okay, Jeff Goldberg, everybody. Cheers, Cheers. thank you. Yeah.